ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಲೌಡ್ಲಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಥ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಥ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ರಿಫ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಲಿವ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಟ್ರೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ದೋಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡೂ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ and as a result we are missing the present so this is only because of error of thinking so let us start thinking properly first do we have a choice to live yesterday or to live tomorrow we have no choice so why not live today if we want to get rid of the problems of the past memories and future worries only option is this and this option how to execute this option simply saying remain in the past don't bother about the past don't bother about the future you should be in the present saying is very easy but the mind keeps on running so how do we sort it out so take refuge in bhagavad gita bhagavad gita solves all the problems of life it is a general medicine for all the problems see what kind of all problems i'll tell you one problem which you do not know there was one nri from usa we have got in india different brands of nris usa nri uh, kiwi nri then kangaroo nri so many of them so these are this was about the usa nri and he came and talked to me swami ji i am extremely disturbed i said something new you tell man when were you settled no the problem is i just can't sleep i have tried taking medicines now my dose has gone to two three tablets and even then i don't get good sleep i don't know what to do i said study bhagavad gita he said how what you tell bhagavad gita i said if you listen to me see then i gave him a very fat book of bhagavad gita and told him when you go to sleep lie on your bed and take bhagavad gita on your hand in your hand start reading next day he woke up at 10 o'clock and he came running swami ji you are great what i have never slept so much as much as slept after taking bhagavad gita in my hand therefore if you don't get sleep study bhagavad gita you will sleep many people they come to satsang only for this purpose i tell you all problems are sorted out so how to remain in the present without the impact of the past and future this is what we have to study and this technique is given in bhagavad gita second chapter this is the most popular shloka from bhagavad gita all of you know bit of it not the complete and the shloka is karmanne vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phala hetur bhuhu mate sangah astu akarmani this is called as karma yog chatur sutri four principles of living in the present if you understand it properly if you don't understand then what happens like in some college the student asked me this question 
Swamini, you people talk about do your duty and don't expect any result. That means do your job and don't take the salary. I said, this is what you have understood. That is not the meaning. Then what is the meaning? I said, listen. Now these are very simple principles. If you learn them, you can never be miserable in your life. Even if God comes down to make you miserable, he will become miserable and go. This fellow is Besharam, Dukhi Hota bhi nahi. It is possible. Only think properly, that's all. Now, first of all, the wrong understanding we will take. And then we will correct our understanding. What is our understanding? Whatever we do in our life, what for we do? Whatever we do. Like some people are observing fast. For what? For happiness. Some people like me are eating the whole life. Like many people tell, Swamiji, how come you don't uh, practice uh, Ekadashi? I said, no, I don't like Ekadashi. Then I like Panchadashi. Why Ekadashi? See? So, Everything I do is for happiness. Those who are eating, they are eating for happiness. Those who are observing fast, they are observing fast for happiness. Those who get married, for what? Has anybody ever thought, come on, I want to get married for misery? No, everybody gets married for getting happiness. What happens is a different topic. And then some of them realize their mistake. And they correct their mistake. So they seek divorce. Divorce also for what? Again for happiness. See friends. And after the divorce, then they come to realize. Pahili thik thi. <laughs> See friends. In short, all the activities of our life, let it be getting involved in the life or getting withdrawn from the life, all of them are aimed at getting happiness. First principle. Now, <clears throat> for example, I am giving you a talk and you are looking at me. I don't know whether you are listening or not. So, if I imagine that after my talk, you will get up and give me a standing ovation and say, Swamiji, your talk was so wonderful, extremely good. We have never heard like this in my, our life. Thereafter, when you appreciate me, thereafter I will become happy. So what I have done? Unknowingly, I have postponed my happiness in the future period of time, is it not? Now a person who postpones his own happiness in the future period of time, even God cannot make him happy. Because we never live in the future. We live only in the present. See friends. So whatever we do, we are designing our life to remain miserable. Understand these principles. They are very simple. Now, there is other option. How do you perform your life? And we have got three options in that performance. One, do it wholeheartedly. Or don't do it at all. Third is what we are average people. So we do it uh, whole in a heart way. Superficially we show I am doing it. But inside there is a revolt. The best example, our Hawaii Sundari. All air hostesses. The moment you enter, how great smile they give Welcome, welcome. Okay. <laughs> and as a result, they all suffer from acidity 
all of them suffer from all the uh, psychosomatic problems because they are not inside but they are outside so what is to be done see there is one simplest technique i tell you my techniques are so simple that nobody practices them <laughs> whatever you do in life do it happily how simple it is or don't do it now understand the equation we have no choice but to live in the present all actions are done in the present if every action of our life is an expression of happiness can we any time become miserable but when we are doing something our hands are somewhere our mind is somewhere one lady came to meet me in mumbai like uh, durga mata her hand was in this uh, ashirwad mudra but it was having a bandage so she came so when she came i said matoshri pranam Swami, you always keep on making fun of us. As there is no need, Amma. You are all self-sufficient. There is no need to make fun of you. Do you know what happened? I said I don't know, and I don't want to know. Why? What is there to know about? It is not Brahma Nandu to know. You know what happened? Um, I was making chapati, and me and my husband we were having a lot of hot discussion, and in that I forgot. that there is no chapati on the tawa and the tawa was extremely hot and in that anger i took it and the tawa stuck to my head now what should i do i said the other hand is free <laughs> now why this happens because whatever she was doing she was not doing it happily understand this basic principle in so many houses we have to go for taking food that is our professional uh, hazard and when we go there we have to say something annadata sukhi bhava actually they make us miserable they don't make us happy and if there are six seven ammas you can see my tragedy they will say so the first you take food so if you survive others will take <laughs> and then all of them are standing there vivekananda pose <laughs> and you can imagine you are taking food and everybody is watching you what a comfortable feeling it is <laughs> and then i take the chapati I take a dip into the uh, dal there is no dal then i go to sabji and make a nice bite and when i am taking it to my mouth my attention is neither on the bite nor on me it is on their face and one of them's mouth opens more this is called a tadatmya identification then i call that a mama please come so she is called she feels that i am extraordinary than others she come i say look here before i take food i offer it to bhagwan sri krishna today you are bhagwan sri krishna pyar pyar kuch nahi hai it is a question of risk factor no you take some more you take some more look here if i take more i will die never mind take he friends so i had to say something thank you very much for good food and all that husband also says then he says may i get such good food every day but not today's food not next one week then the question comes swami ji when you come the food is so tasty and so wonderful why she can't cook every day and for the first time she agrees she says yes swami ji i don't know what is the reason the food is so good i said i'll tell you when you are cooking for me 
you are extremely happy. Do any job happily, it will have a different fragrance to your life. See? But when the same, if I said, if I come and stay in your house all the time, the same thing will happen to me also. See? Therefore, the simplest thing in life is, whatever you are supposed to do, do it happily. Now, where from to start? Start from how you get out of your bed. Oh God, what is the time? It is uh, 8.45. Okay, I'll get up at 9 o'clock. <laughs> because 8.45 is not a round figure. It should be a round figure. And then it becomes uh, 9.5, again uh, odd figure. So let it make it 9.50. And ultimately, we are sleeping first uh, Shavasana, then on the left side, then on the right side, then Bhujangasana, and then the pressure develops. And then we naturally get up to go to nature's call. Such a way you begin your day. How can you live happily? A simple principle of life. Whatever you do, do it only happily. When you are doing anything happily, you are not tired. You are not bored. You are innovative. You are not frustrated and you don't expect any result out of it because you have done it already happily. Then we don't depend on others. In one medical college, after my talk was over, one girl, she got up and said, Kamaji, I have got a question. I said, Amma, ask clearly. Don't beat around the bush. Don't call me Amma. I said, this is the only way I can grow young. When I call you Amma, when my mother is 22, I can't be old. Then she said, why you go on playing with your beard all the time? I told, it's your problem, not my problem. Simple rule, don't try to justify, don't try to prove anything to anybody in life. You are answerable to your own concerns. What people will say? Kuch to logo kahenge, logo ka kaam hai kahena. Chodo bekar ki baate apne masti mein rehna. So Maharaj. Therefore, when we are doing anything, we have no choice but to remain in the present. All actions are done in the present. If every action is an expression of happiness, you are not waiting. After I do this, what will I get? That chapter will be closed. How simple it is? But what the parents do? The real parenthood and the happiness of parenthood is when the children are up to the age of seven or eight, Hug them, cuddle them, do everything. Then up to the age of 13, let them be given values, discipline, etc. From 13 to 19, inspiration, goal, ambition, achievements. And after the child takes away your shoes, you keep on searching. Where are my shoes? Then understand, he is no more your son. He is your friend. And... That's the end of your parenthood. But when a child is born, there are many births take place simultaneously. Child is born, mother is born, father is born. Child grows, mother, father never grow. One old mother, she was complaining to me, Swamiji, see, my son doesn't listen to me. I said, really? Call him, I'll scold him. The son was called retired brigadier. And the mother was 98, not out. When she is going to grow up? And if this is not understood, then frustrated. 
नौ महीने पेट में रखा था इसी दिन के लिए अपीठ पे रखती पेट में रखा था एनी पेरेंट हु बिकम मिजरेबल बिकॉज ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन दे आर एट फॉल्ट यू हैव डिस्ट्रॉयड यूर लाइफ लेट डेम डिस्ट्रॉय देयर लाइफ यू वॉन्ट टू हेल्प देम नो we are only for one purpose in this world that we are an instrument of expressing happiness you cannot be happy yesterday you cannot be happy tomorrow you can be happy only now so there are three channels through which we can express our happiness body speech and mind so what is the expression of happiness through body whatever work you are doing do it happily you must feel fulfillment in that job this i have learned from one carpenter in delhi he was a muslim man he used to do something in my house some repair was going on so i asked him hey how much time it will take he said it will take about 4 5 days i said okay finish it in 4 5 days 4 5 days over Six days, seven days. I said, "Come on, you told five days, but you are not completing." He kept everything down. He said, "Maharaj, unless I am satisfied with my work, how can you be satisfied my, with my work?" What a great message! Are you happy with your life? See, they are carrying the burden of regrets. all the time the same thing i should not have done this thing you no know, why did i do that they but now family can it be corrected see past cannot be corrected you have to only delete the past you cannot undo the past see friends the more you understand these basics then you will understand that we express in three channels physical speech and the mind so physical whatever we are doing do it to the best of required ability not your ability that is important and you will see the real joy is in doing the things the other day we saw that girl who was doing some painting and all that so you see, look at this people children when they do something they are doing so much involved everything is forgotten see these music people dance people they don't belong to this world because they have learned the art of remaining in the utter present you cannot be happy yesterday you cannot be happy tomorrow if you are happy you have to be only today and now therefore what we the technique of remaining in the utter present be happy in a school the teacher has asked to write a story short story but it must conclude happily so the student started well st- student finished and simply sitting what about you i finished the story you told right short and quick story i finished it okay everybody stop read your story he read there were there was a man and a woman they were standing back to back first sentence they started walking second sentence third there after they lived happily <laughs> what a beautiful story is it you wanted it to end happily now when you are happy that time you are in the complete present and those of you when i told this and you have not heard me this happens in many times Many times, you know, some suddenly some joke happens. Everybody laughs, and one uh, Kumbha Karna he has not heard, but because of the laughing sound, he gets up and he says, "Hey, what happened? What happened?" So that person tells him, "This is what happened." Then alone, one come here, do this, he laughs. <laughs> Two laughters. One is a tube light delayed. <laughs> hey, friends, therefore. simplest way whatever you are doing physically do it to your satisfaction 
you know what happens when you do it this way you are busy in old age people suffer only because they have got excess time at their disposal don't give one single minute for you free you have to keep yourself occupied busy 24/7 marne ko fursat nahi you see the small kids they never get bored children are never depressed can you imagine a child is depressed i have seen here only i don't know that girl is not coming these days i was staying with them for the first time when i came to auckland and they had a small daughter i was taking food and the mother said you take food after swami is over okay and then she was telling something the child said mom you are putting too much of stress on my mind why you hear child talking the stress hey friends do what you have to do happily and cheerfully you will never be tired and keeping ourselves busy is our need nobody needs us hey friends now there are many of us who are old he can't they can't do too much of physical work for them or scripture stain engage yourself in upasana follow the pushti marg latke khao mote ho jao pushti marg means keep on eating in that you have to begin your day right from morning with the god and this i have seen in one lady she is no more in pune she must have been about 80 uh, rather 90 to 94 she was like this l shape bent and hardly any strength in her body but she never had time when her great grandson was to be married she said you go and get married and come back because today i have to read uh, this um, kulcha or what you call sudama sudama story to bhagwan krishna he is waiting for me i can't come you go my right from the morning she is busy she will get up in the morning because she is l shape she can't even see up so she will be taking one teaspoon pura water one flower whether it's a dipping that also she doesn't know and she will be giving the bath to lord san then take a teaspoon full of milk and go to her room and the gods are there is not jumme ke jumme every day the gods are taken out nicely clean wash and everything is done and then doing the puja and she was old that time no studies but she read bhagavat mahapuran 40 times in her lifetime and there for no time her mind was totally engaged only in the divine thought and one day when i was having talks in our house she sometimes to come and sit in the steps and after the talk was over i used to go to her room do namaskar to all her gods do namaskar to her and she will give me prasad one drop of milk and two grains of sugar that was the prasad and she told me swami ji today you were dancing and chanting vitthala 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 i never knew you can sing so well and you can dance so nicely and i was sitting and talk talking on katopadishad her mind was completely saturated with the divine thought therefore nothing in this world can attract her and what was the technique technique was this keep yourself occupied don't keep free physically now the second thing we also have to keep ourselves occupied by the speech today when i was sitting before coming here sometime i go and sit in his lap i'll tell you about sitting in the lap this happened in uk in uh, wales i was staying with some british family and uh, morning time 
I got a very small room, hardly any place to move. So on the bed itself I was sitting, sit quiet, quietly. Then Amma came to wake me up or to call me for breakfast. She opened the door, but I didn't realize. So she went down. And then afterwards, when I went down, she said, Swamiji, I'm so sorry. I came and disturbed your meditation. I said, don't abuse me. I don't do meditation. Then what were you doing? I said, I was sitting in the lap of Bhagwan Sri Krishna. When I said to her like that, an old British lady, she started crying. She hugged. How can you easily say this? I said, this is the truth. Panchadashi says, Dhyatru dhyane parityajya deyameva vashishyate. When the meditator and the meditation disappears, Paramatma manifests. And for that, what you have to do? Do nothing. Go and sit in the lap of Krishna. He will take care of you. Like a baby sits in the lap of the mother and she is happy. A baby never does meditation. But she is happier. And those who are doing meditation, they suffer silently, collectively in darkness. Dear friends, so before coming, when I was sitting in his lap, this beautiful thought came. When we talk to ourselves, observe this. Talking to ourselves is a thought. One after another. And how are the thoughts? Those thoughts are pertaining to the future. And one thought breeds the next thought. So many people are coming for dinner. And I have made for rice only for two people. If 20 people come, what should I do? Um, this uh, sambar I can make into rasam, but uh, this rice, what can I do? South Indian's technique. Because one thought breeds another thought. Now instead of that, try this. When you chant the Lord's name, that is also a thought. So when you are sitting, quiet, the goal is getting rid of the body identification. That is the goal. And as a result of this, you are not thinking about anybody or anything. But the mind won't remain quiet. Thoughts are always about somebody or something. Paramatma is neither somebody nor something. Then simply chant his name. Om Namah Shivaya. Because there is no next thought bred out of this Lord's name. Mind remains quiet. But old habit, again you will feel some thought is coming. Again fire another rocket. Om Namah Shivaya. And when you keep on doing this again and again, slowly you will discover this simple technique. This technique I learned in Vrindavan from one Audhut Mahatma. I was pretty young that time. And that Mahatma was very, uh, Audhut Mahatma are always like that. So when I went to see him, Maharaj, get out. So I stood there. Go and get a mala and come back. So I went, got one mala. He abused me. What about the bag? They got, that is called as Gomukhi. So I went, got Gomukhi. Yeah, I gave it to him. Get out from here. Come tomorrow. Next day I went. He said, now keep this finger out of that bag. <coughs> and chant the whatever mantra you are chanting like this. This is Tarjani, Madhyama, Anamika. Keep the mala on this Anamika and learn synchronization. 
this is a physical act. When you pull the mala to your ears, physical act. This is body. Then speech. Then with every movement of the bead, you chant the Lord's name. Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. That time, pull it. Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Pull it. <coughs> so, two things. Body, speech. And also, the mind. Give it a try. I gave this try for three years. Any time, the, get me a glass of water. Any time, the mind is running here and there, you just take the mala in the hand, immediately the synchronization happens. Because these three legs of this tripod, they are connected. If I pull one, other two also come. Now, <coughs> mala is associated with the Lord's name. The moment it comes in the hand, the speech starts chanting, Om Namah Shivaya, mind goes there. Instantaneously, your running mind is arrested and you come back in the present. <coughs> She'll scold you. Why did you fill it full? Couldn't you make it little half? You are spilling here and there. I heard all that. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> physical speech and the mind, they must be synchronized. I am taking you step by step deeper and deeper. We all have two uh, things common. One is called as the Jnana Shakti, the energy as knowledge. And second is Kriya Shakti, the energy as action. All of us have got these two things. Now, both these energies are expression of the same common source. Like electricity is common behind the bulb, light, Jnana Shakti, and behind the uh, fan, Kriya Shakti. They are not two. One. Now be attentive. When you draw two lines from the same point, those two lines cannot be parallel. They will always have some angle. Again, be very attentive. As you go away from the source, from the origin, what will happen? The distance between the two will start widening. Once I was in Alaska and we were going by the sea plane and I was sitting next to the pilot. Hardly four or five people in a small plane I said, hey, I want to see her. You come and sit here. This is for you. I said. So she was moving the dial here and there. I said, um, suppose we move it more, what will happen? He said, if you move 0 0.001 more than required here, you will be landing miles away at your destination because the angle will change and you will go such a long distance. So, the two lines coming from the common source will keep on increasing their distance. This is exactly what happens in our life. And therefore, we are miserable. What happens? Knowledge-wise, we are all knowing everything. Action-wise, we fail. What is the knowledge? Early to bed and early to rise is the way to be healthy, wealthy and wise. What is our life? Late to bed and late to rise is the way to be unhealthy and otherwise. So what is happening? We lose self-confidence. 
no yaar i want to always know but i cannot get up in the morning friends if we are devoted to the lord the devotion to the lord expresses in our heart as self confidence parmatma vishwas manifest as atma vishwas when we are doubt we don't have doubt on ourselves we are doubt on him because these two energies they are bifurcating going away and away and this you do a dozen times slowly you come to a conclusion i can't do yaar anything i am good for nothing you know it's better that i commit suicide so one person went to commit suicide but there also he had doubt suppose i don't die then <laughs> zero confidence and without confidence you can achieve nothing in life see therefore respect your knowledge in your action then what is the knowledge baba ji like us they tell त्रिविधम नरक सेदम द्वारम नाशनम आत्मन काम क्रोधस तथा लोभ तस्मा त्यजे डिजायर एंगर एंड ग्रीड आर द गेट वेज टू दिल देर फॉर रिजेक्ट डेम एंड समबडी कम्स लेट एंड बाबा जी बिकम्स एंग्री इज इन सिनेमा हॉल आर वॉट कमिंग लेट एनी टाइम यू लाइक सो यू हेज बिकम एंग्री वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट थिंग बुक फॉर हेल Hey friends, knowledge must be practiced in one's life. We don't have to teach anybody in this world. Then we have to learn from everybody. But normally, what we do, we want to teach to others. Don't teach, learn, learn. And in this manner, when we practice this. slowly our knowledge will be respected in our action and our actions will be the representation of our knowledge such a person has tremendously integrated personality and thereafter his or her words carry meaning words carrying meaning and the impact thereof <coughs> just this example is very simple suppose i write on a paper stone s t o n and make a laddu out of that stone paper and throw at shanti so she will open it oh swamiji want a stone she will put a stone in that and throw at me so when i have thrown the paper at her only with the word without the meaning it won't hurt exactly why children don't listen to us because our words carry no meaning once bhagwan ram krishna paramahams was visited by mother and she told akur my son is eating too much of sweets tell him not to eat so the great master said okay get come next sunday like that it was on three four sundays and on the fifth sunday bhagwan ram krishna paramahams told that child don't eat sweets it's not good for your health your teeth will become bad and the child agreed immediately he said okay i'll not eat then the child went away then the mother was scolding this master if this only you have to tell why didn't you tell on the first day you made me visit four five times then he said mother before i tell the child don't eat sweets i must abstain myself from eating sweets at least for one week what right we have unless we practice it when you just start living in this awareness you are neither in the past nor in the future take care of your present future will be taken care of so physically whatever you do 
when you are walking walk cheerfully happily when you put on clothes put on nice clothes properly ironed clean neat about this there is one story i read mahatma gandhi and um, ravindranath tagore in shanti niketan they decided to go for a walk so mahatma gandhi no makeup required ever ready battery and ravindranath tagore a huge body a huge hair and nice body and well built and all that proper clothes so when mahatma gandhi came uh, he said wait for a few minutes he took 20 minutes to get ready when they are walking mahatma gandhi said why you are wasting this time all this thing ravindranath tagore said look here when i walk on the road people look at me and they feel good when they look at you they feel ya ki kapda kyun nahi pehenta that is the reason when we come to the temple never come with dirty clothes dress as if you are going for a big function see it's so important this i learned from one military uh, jawan i said hey mahatma ji tell me something what you are um, uh, boss told to he said you know we are taught first time i attended i still remember it you know his words he said how you dress and how you address tells the quality of your life how important it is thus we start living more and more in awareness this is taking care of your present so when you walk walk cheerfully happily not like a buffalo phatak phat phatak phat phatak phat are gupta ji kahan ja rahe kahi nahi yaar okay let's go for a movie acha chal are are you furniture or what you go anywhere anybody ask you see friends so physical expression must be full of zest and joy similarly we express also through the speech how do we talk see you must have come across there are some people they don't talk they bark kya chahiye kyun aaya kyun khade hua ab wow ram kya se bolu baba kya se bolu don't bark constantly wow 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 then bhagavad gita tells this three principle which i am telling you what is the tapasya of the speech anudvega karam vakyam satyam priya hitam chayat talk in such a manner the one who hears you feels good otherwise enemy yaar tum beowulf ho Even if he is, you should not say, because he knows. No need. Then, what is the tapasya of the mind? Tapasya of the mind is mana prasada saumyatvam maunam atma vinigraha. Mana prasada, prasade sarva dukkana hani rasyo pajayate prasanna chetaso yashu buddhi pariyavatishtate. remain ever cheerful how to remain cheerful only by practice we have become miserable so do the counter practice how to start it once i was going for my talk with my hostess daughter maybe about eight standard seven standard i was sitting in the front she was sitting behind there one more girl Then who is the second one? Kamini, she is my friend. So I ask her, "Hey, how are you?" Mm. I said, "What can I reply?" You are going in convent, and this is what you are taught. You know the worst kind of talking. If you want to hear, uh, listen to these uh, American NRI children. They cannot say one sentence complete. You ask them, 
hey, what is your program after schooling? What do you want to, which field do you want to take? Ah, uh, e, I don't know. I can't say one sentence. So, <clears throat> when she said, I said, this is not the way to reply. I will again ask you a question and you have to reply. I am on the top of the world, okay? Okay. Then I ask, now I again ask, okay? Now you tell me, how are you? Oh, I am on the top of the world. This is not the way. Your word should carry the meaning. Insist you are happy. This is yoga from Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavan Krishna clearly tells, Tam vidya dukha sanyoga. When miseries come in your life, Tam vidya dukha sanyoga. Viyogam. Refuse to be miserable. Yoga sanitam. That is called as yoga. Twisting the body, how twist kare, that is not yoga. See, so important. Misery is coming in everybody's life, including the electric post. We go for a walk, you know, in the morning. And when I go there, I see many people come with their dogs. And the dog will not do anywhere. He is searching for his pillar. And when that pillar comes, the pillar starts telling, Oh God, he has again come today. <laughs> and then the dog will go only to that pillar and first of all do the Atma Pradakshina <laughs> and then do the Sashtanga Dandavat and then Om Purnamada 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 Chate. So even the electric post has a problem. So if you have a problem, you are better than the electric post, isn't it? Miseries you can attribute to somebody. But we are all miserable by our choice. You must have seen, you know, these various countries here also, they have so many questions. And you have to reply, yes, no. Don't have to write a thesis. In the same manner, when we were coming in this world, God gave us immigration form. We are going from the God's abode to the world. And it was written on that form. I normally land in USA at uh, Washington Dulles Airport. And recently they have started putting welcome. Otherwise they are never seeing welcome. So there is a scroll in different languages. But the words are same, welcome to Virginia. So it is written in uh, English, it is written in Spanish, written in uh, different languages. In Hindi also they are written. But a person who must have told him Hindi, he must be a Bengali. How do you know that? Because what he has written there, you know? Welcome to Virginia. <laughs> Because among the Bengalis, there is no war. That is why no Bengali is ever worried. Don't be buried. Come out. So when we were entering this world, God gave us a immigration form. And on that it was written, Welcome to the world. Which world? Anityam asukam lokam imam prapya. You are entering this temporary but miserable world. Asukam lokam. And a question is asked. Do you want to be miserable? Options are given. Yes and no. You have a freedom. You have a choice. No, everybody is writing no, no, no. Let me write yes. Bhagavan is a tathastu. And the miseries will not leave you throughout your life. See, you know how it happens. <clears throat> I am staying with uh, Shanti. Now here I am so comfortable, all comforts. If somebody asks me, Kamali, you go to Auckland, where do you suggest me to stay? Go to Shanti's place, very nice. 
So I will send that person here. Suppose Shanti treats me the following way. When I go to take bath, there is half a way I have applied soap and she switches up the water. I can't do anything. And the food she gives me left over for one week and smelling. And with that miserable stay for a week, I go. Somebody asked, Swamiji, I am going to Auckland. Where should I go? And say, stay anywhere. Don't go there. <laughs> Why? Because she did not entertain me properly. Exactly. When you entertain the miseries, how we will entertain miseries? We become miserable. Then the next misery will ask, Hey, misery one, when you went, uh, where to go? Go to Swamiji. Very good host. He will become miserable. Therefore, make the miseries miserable. Tam vidya dukkha sanyogam viyogam yoga sannitam That is the real meaning of yoga. Do not justify you are miserable. But many married people have got this funny thing. One lady, Punjabi lady in Delhi, after my talk was over, she was so angry. She came, Swamiji, what is there? You all the time go on teasing and making fun of the married people. Be happy, be happy. Get married and show, be happy. So she was justifying. Marriage is a license to be miserable. Tatastu. If your wife is very good, understanding, intelligent, working, this is just example. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore you as a husband are happy. What is your contribution? But if your wife is bhayanak, problematic, constantly complaining, not doing anything, the house is in a mess, and yet you are happy, then you are a genius. See, not understanding this, people go to ashram. I want to go to Himalayas to do sadhana. Why? I want to do tapasya. Now what is tapasya? Tapasya is invite problems and don't suffer. So there is very cold and yet, um, I, no, no, I am doing tapasya. Tapasya, shaky tapasya. Then it is very hot. Agre, vanni, prushte, bhano, ratro, chupuku, samar, pita, janu. In the summer, you are exposing yourself to the heat. Why? Tapasya. You are not taking food. Why? Tapasya. So you are inviting problems in your life. That is what you call tapasya. You all the time talk about homemade things, is it not? In somebody's house I went and I was taking... Uh, Achar, pickles. I said, hey, which is this company? So nice, tasty pickles. No, Swamiji, I made it. I said, don't tell lies. He said, no, Swamiji. But why did you ask which company it is? I said, the marketed pickles have to be tasty. Then only they will be sold. Homemade things, you have to say they are good even if they are not. Then you can survive in the house. You all the time talk about Homemade, homemade, homemade. Why don't you take homemade tapasya? Don't go anywhere. Wherever you are kept, take this vow in life. Refuse to be miserable. You have learned karma yoga, you have learned ashtanga yoga, you have learned upasana, bhakti yoga, you have learned jnana yoga. This is all. Now you will see, in this, we have not brought last life, karma, prarabdha, hell, heaven, paap, punya. Nothing is brought. But we are so accustomed. All the time, patani kya paap kya ta isse shadi ho gai. No. Drop the total past. As if this life's past is less suffering for us. 
we borrowed the past from the last life. Who knows last life? He's a good friend of mine. He's a yogi. And uh, we always meet every year from the 1st to 7th of January on the same platform. After my talk, then he gives talk on yoga. So <clears throat> he was telling me once, Swamiji, uh, I know my life lasts so many years. Then he started telling about his life. In the last life, I was in Dehradun. Before that, I was in Jabalpur. And then before that, I was in Sachansa. Then seventh life, I was a parrot. This is how he told about his life. He said, I can tell about your life also if you want. I said, I know. I was a donkey. Now also I am donkey. Standard. Friends, are we having less problem in this life that you want to borrow from the last life? It is only for this purpose. All the ladies, they do either the Karvachauth or this, um, what do you call it, Word of Savitri. Because, you know, the, what is their problem? With great difficulty, train this fellow. Next life, I have to again train. Better, the same fellow comes. Don't get carried away by all that. We have to learn to remain in only utter today. Okay, now the concluding thought. If we have to thus live, what for to live then? If there is no future, if there is no past, what for to live in the present? Again, go to Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavan Krishna says, Sukha dukhe same krutva labha labhau jaya jayau. Anything you do in life, there are three possibilities. First possibility, when you do something, you win or you are defeated. Second possibility, when you win, you are happy. When you are defeated, you are... No, when you win, you gain. When you are defeated, you lose. And third, when you gain, you are happy. When you lose, you are miserable. So these three pairs. Victory, defeat, gain, loss, joy, sorrows. Bhagavan says, Same Krutva. Same Krutva means they are equal. Then why to do that? Naivam Papam Avapsasi. Meaning, you will function in this world, but there will be no impression ever made on your mind. Get this point, it is so simple. To make this point, I'll tell you how impressions are made or not made. In some house, I went for taking food and then there was time and the child told me, Tommy, till the food is ready, let us play carom and I don't understand how to play carom. So when we were playing, I was playing my tricks, you know, Swami tricks. When he's looking there, said, take two or three and put in my... <laughs> Who can doubt? How can a Swami be a cheat? But they don't know, Swamis are the most cheats. So, he caught me second, third time. And then he started crying. Mommy, Swami is the cheat. I said, no, yeah, I will not do it. No promise. No way. Then we started playing again. That very moment, his mother said, Swami ji, food is ready. I said, come, forget about it. Let's go and eat food. He said, no, no. Now you have to play. I am winning it now. So be attentive. For that child, victory and defeat was an issue. For me, playing that game was only time pass. Till the food is ready. Apply the same principle. Victory and defeat. You are a child. Time pass. You are a Mahatma. See? You do good, you go to heaven. You do bad, you go to hell. Don't do anything. Relax. God will be confused. <laughs> be attentive. How to give up karma? Understand these principles, friends. Karma is action plus doership is equal to karma. 
many people do pranayam pranayam is done breathing is not done breathing happens and therefore when you do pranayam you will get tired suppose i punish you because i am a yoga teacher you did something wrong i punish you do anulom vilom pranayam for 21000 times 21000 anu my nose nose will go away but how many times you breathe every day man see 21600 times we breathe every day 15 times per minute has anybody ever said i am breathing since morning now i am going to stop it enough <laughs> because breathing happens pranayam is done and therefore when you have got asthma it is not a sin when your lungs are clear it is not a merit sin and merit happens only if there is a doer associated with any action and therefore what is to be achieved is this so when i was playing with the child i was playing only for a time pass till the food is ready for me there was no question whether i win or i defeat no problem exactly live in this world you take this principle and see what a beautiful life it is but if you want to do something do something then what happens like a old man i came across with him years before in common host <clears throat> and morning breakfast he asked me uh, what do you do i said i do nothing but then why you are here i said here i am for breakfast going for breakfast no in this town calcutta i oh, i have come here for giving talks on gita do you think your gita talks is going to change the world i said no i don't think that way then why give you talks papi pet ke liye you don't want the world i said i don't want the world to change the world is beautiful as it is see the beauty in god's creation don't try to improve god then i had to out of courtesy ask babu ji uh, i don't know about you i'm so sorry please tell me if you want to make any old person happy ask them about their life and don't listen चाबी भर के छोड़ दो यू मस्ट हैव सीन यू नो दो चिंपान जी टॉयज आई डिड दैट एंड देन ही स्टार्टेड वाह 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 वन आफ्टर अदर आई डिड सो मच फॉर देम आई डिड सो मच फॉर देम बट लास्ट सिक्सटी ईयर्स आई स्पेंड माई लाइफ ऑन देयर बट नाउ दे आर आफ्टर माई लाइफ दे वॉन्ट टू किल मी they want to destroy the institution which i developed for them and then the bitterness came the world is like a dog's tail in the bitterness came i said oh ji but the beauty of the dog is in the crookedness of the tail is it not imagine a dog with a tail like a dish antenna will it look beautiful if you are able to see the beauty in god's creation you have gone to the same spot where from god is looking at the creation this vision you all have you are all uh, grastas you all have what is that vision a mother looking at her child the foolishness of the child is the wisdom for the mother one mother after satsang she brought her child and kept on my lap and she said swami ji uh, i was wanting to come for so many months but i could not today i decided and i came so when she gave me the child in my lap i said mama you are the best of all the people she said how come i said other people are giving only money as dakshina but you have given me your son as dakshina now i am going to make a baba ji out of him <laughs> thank you so much and she started crying so swami ji no 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 i said you can't take the dakshina wapas <laughs> it is not a pay atm ptm <laughs> and when i was making fool of her that child came to her rescue he did 
what he should not have done. And all the fragrance started coming. I said, oh God, take this dirty fellow. He thinks I am a potty or what? Take him away. You know what the mother said? Swamiji, you are great. I said, what happened? Teen din nahi gaya tha. <laughs> now that mother is not worried that he did shit in my lap. But she was happy. Three days he has not gone because of my holy touch. He was relieved. <laughs> Discover this happiness every moment. You will forget your past. You will not worry about your future. Live in the present all the time. Slowly, the tense will go and presence will manifest. And presence is Ananda Deva Kalvimani Bhutani Jayante Anandena Jatani Jivanti. We become the dispenser of bliss and not the collector of blisters in our life. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Namaha Hari Om